I just want to take a second to apologize because I know I said a few weeks ago that I was done getting angry with this team. I was done letting them affect my mood and, you know, piss me off. And, you know, we ultimately know the season's over. We know the road that lies ahead. It's not going to be pretty. So I was done getting angry. And, you know, the same way that we always joke about the team hitting rock bottom, they still invent new ways to lose and find ways to still lower the bar after every time that we say that. I find myself just amazed that, yes, they still found a way to get me angry. And I should have known better because I think I said that when there was like two and a half months left, the season left. And, you know, the two different reports that came out today um, after the firing of Joe Douglas, which, again, I predicted uh, two nights ago, all these stories, all these reports, they were going to start coming out. Some of them I do think are by the Jets. Um, but some of these things that, that you're hearing just really give you a lot of concern about the direction of this team and where they could even possibly go and who's just going to want to come here when you look at the biggest problem being ownership. And only the Jets can make guys like Joe Douglas and Robert Sala, who clearly had a long enough tenure to change the culture, to draft the right players, to try to develop a winning environment. Uh, they clearly failed. They didn't get the job done. Um, you know, the, the record speaks for itself. I'm not trying to defend them, but only the New York Jets can make those guys sympathetic figures because a anybody with a brain that follows this team can realize that the problems start and end with ownership. And the one report, you know, the elephant in the room, we all know this, it, it's been historically true that Woody Johnson, um, you know, when, whenever social media dictates it or the fans start to panic, he gets involved with player personnel decisions or whenever he thinks it's going to sell tickets, like with Tim Tebow, you know, he butts in and he oversteps. And it was thought to be believed that, you know, there was a new reporting structure, Robert Sala to Joe Douglas, Joe Douglas to ownership. And somewhere along the lines, clearly that changed. Um, there's reports out there from different people that, you know, apparently Woody Johnson's been uh, much more involved than even some people realize. We know he was involved in the Reddick negotiations. We know he was involved in the Adams trade. Uh, we know that he, ne he didn't consult with anybody before firing Robert Sala. We know that he was the one behind the Aaron Rodgers trade. So when you really start to look at all these things, you, know, you have to wonder, did Joe Douglas and Robert Sala legitimately have a chance to put their true blueprint and staple on this team? Or were many of the prominent decisions that ultimately failed, were they influenced or ultimately made by ownership in Woody Johnson? Um, you know, so that report kind of confirmed what we already know. Woody Johnson just constantly, he can't help himself whenever the fans panic, whenever social media starts to go nuts, whenever there's a little bit of chaos, he oversteps, he makes a move. And, you know, I, I said it at the time when they fired Salah, I think I said it that night on, on the first or the next stream that we did, that at that moment, you made Joe Douglas a puppet, even the Rodgers trade, you could even go back further and, and say it then, but he ultimately made Joe Douglas a puppet, he was on the last year of his contract anyway, and he doesn't doesn't even consult him for a major decision like that, doesn't ask anybody in the locker room for any input, he just thinks that he knows better because he reads tweets on social media. And then the other report that came out that just made me go nuts was this idea that he was actually thinking of benching Aaron Rodgers, which I call total bullshit on. There's no way, after everything the Jets went through the last two years with the quarterback position, that Woody Johnson would think about benching a Hall of Fame quarterback. Aaron Rodgers came into this year as the savior. He was the, he was going to be the one guy that turned around all the losing from not just the last 14 years, but in particular with this team the last two years. They were a quarterback away. He was supposed to be the shiny new toy that was going to save it all. There is absolutely zero chance that Woody Johnson, five games or four games into the season, was actually thinking about Aaron Rodgers. What I do think this is, is the New York Jets ultimately trying to distance themselves from many of the decisions that have ultimately failed that are on them, that are on ownership, that overstep Joe Douglas trying to get ahead of the story once the leaks really start coming out from Joe Douglas's camp, from Robert Sala's camp, from players that they ultimately move on from. All this shit is going to come out. All this shit is going to hit the fan. I think the players know very well what's going on behind the scenes. That ownership is way too involved. They set the culture here. It's a losing one. You even wonder just how much power, again, that, that Sala and Joe Douglas and guys like that really have to turn things around. But again, I call total bullshit on this story. There is no fucking way that Woody Johnson was going to bench Aaron Rodgers. The the headlines that it would create, all the chaos, thinking about McAfee, if Aaron Rodgers is now your quarterback too. Like, there is absolutely no way that Woody Johnson would have gone down that route. Um, I, I wouldn't put it past him, obviously. Again, we, we know he meddles. We know he tries to interfere. But there is no way that he would have tried to bench Aaron Rodgers. I just think this is the New York Jets realizing the Aaron Rodgers era is coming to an end. And now they're trying to distance themselves from the decision to ultimately hire him or to, to, trade for, uh, to trade for him and then hire Hackett and everything else that followed, retaining Hackett, not, uh, not signing a backup quarterback. 
all the chaos that followed, or which I think was ultimately led by ownership, I think they're just trying to distance themselves from it now. Um, and, and the biggest problem that I have with all of this, and I'll, I'll wrap up this rant now because it's late and I want to get to bed. Um, the, the biggest problem I think I have with all of this is where does it leave you in your search for a GM, for a president of football operations, and for a prominent CEO head coach? When it's already well known that your owner meddles and gets way too involved and is not somebody that you want to come work for, now that it's been confirmed again with uh, another guy that was well-respected from the Ravens, from the Eagles, well-run football operations, a guy that drafted you some young talent. I know he's got plenty of misses and, again, plenty of reasons you could have fired him. But all these guys that are well-respected, they come here and their careers just go down the drain. So who now is going to want to come here and put their career and their reputation on the line for Woody Johnson? Who's going to do it? What reputable candidate is coming to the New York Jets, trusting that Woody Johnson is going to stay the fuck out of the way. Good luck, Jets.